it's me, fantastic! Listen, come here. There was once upon a time a really horrible farmer. Just looking at him reminded you of witch poo. He was so horrible, he decided to mash his donkey up and turn him into glue, just because it was getting a bit old. The brainy donkey, though, had heard about all this and decided to escape the night before the mashing and run away and become a musician in a town called Bremen. And he was just sneaking round the side of the barn in the middle of his escape when he heard the farmer's voice talking to the farm dog. Hey, dog, you're getting pretty old, ain't you? You're getting so old, you make me sick. Well, excuse me for breathing, said the dog. And I'll tell you what happens to horrid old dogs who get too old. First, they get their heads chopped off with a big, sharp knife. And then their master puts their head on a stick and uses it as a brush to sweep out the pig's sty. Uh, are you sure that's what happens, sir? Uh, don't they get put in a nice kennel full of chocolate drops and silk cushions and lovely little... No, they don't. So get a good night's sleep, Mr. Doggy Wog, because when that cock crows in the morning, it's whack, off with your head. <laughs> and big dog tears rolled down the big dog's face as the man went away, laughing wickedly. <laughs> woof, woof, bonk. <laughs> Psst, whispered the donkey. Don't cry, old fellow, my dog. Come with me. I'm escaping. We're going to be musicians in Bremen. Oh, hey, nice one, big ears, said the dog. I'll come with you. I can play the flute with my nose. Doo -doo 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 -doo. It sounds great. Yeah, but you've got to watch out for the bogies flying out the end like. And, and so, the donkey and the dog crept very quietly past the barn. But suddenly, heard the farmer talking to the farm cat. So they jumped into the haystack and hid. Hey! Oh, yes, master, you called me. Listen, cat, you're getting pretty old, ain't you? You can't chase the mice so well anymore. Oh, master, I think you are mistaken. I get my claws out every time I hear those little... Shut up! In the morning, I'm gonna chop you up. Into little strings, I'm gonna use you to make a tennis racket. A tennis racket? You cannot be serious. Are you sure you mean more? Yeah, vooze. A nice, bouncy set of tennis racket strings. <laughs> Nighty night. And the man went off, <laughs> laughing into his house. Cat. Cat. Whispered the donkey. <gasps> oh, cracky. A talking haystack. Please spare me. I've been a very good cat all my life. Don't eat me up. No, no. It's me, the donkey. I'm in the haystack with the dog. Come and escape with us. We're going to be musicians. So he did. And they escaped all night. Uh, but they didn't escape very well because it was dark. Uh, which, no, no, it's this way. No, this way. No, no, no. It's this way. Look, I know what I'm talking about. No, you don't. Oh, think, oh, look. And when morning came, they were only around the other side of the barn. Oh, no. cock a doodle Time to wake up. cock a doodle Wake up, everybody. Hey, donkey, dog and cat. Where are you sneaking off to? So shut up, will ya? We're trying to escape. Oh, you're escaping! Hi, everybody! The donkey and the dog and the cat are all escaping! But keep it under your heart! And at that moment, the window opened and the man stuck his very sleepy head out. Why do you have to do that every morning? I'm telling you, boy, if you cock a doodle doo one more time, I'm going to cut your head off. Go on, make my day. Well, I can't help it. It's my job. <sighs> cock a doodle doo. <laughs> okay, boy, you've had it, rooster. And the man slammed his window shut and started sharpening his knife. Hey, rooster, you'll have to come with us, said the donkey. What? Okay, I'm escaping too. I'm escaping too. And the cat grabbed the rooster by the beak so he couldn't make any more noise and they ran out of the back gate. Bubba-dum, 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 bubba-dum. They ran as far as their old legs could carry them, but they could still hear the farmer sharpening his knife and saying, Hey wife, you're getting pretty old too, ain't you? 
And then there was an enormous kapow as the wife hit him and shouted, that's enough of that silly nonsense. Who's going to do all the work now that you've scared off all the animals? Hmm? You can just get off outside and do it all yourself. Yeah, I don't want to. And you can stop talking in that stupid voice. Oh, but I thought that made me sound all dangerous and American. Well, it doesn't. It's stupid. Bip, bap, bop. Now, just get out into that farmyard. And she picked him up and threw him out the window. And she didn't even open it first. Kapinkle, wee, splot in the cow poo. And that's what happens when you're cruel to animals. Oh, the animals. Well, the four animals, just in case, ran on for another hundred miles. Clippity clop, clippity clop. Pip, pap, pip, pap, pip, 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 hop, 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 cock a doodle doo. Until they thought they were absolutely safe. <sighs> Eventually they stopped. <sighs> At a little house. <sighs> and decided to ask for a little cup of tea. But over the door of the house was a sign saying, Animal Hunters Limited. We kill any animals, any time. And unfortunately, none of the animals could read. And they didn't know that the house was filled with big, fat hunters in red coats with guns and animal traps of all kinds. <gasps> so anyway, one of the hunters was saying, I took a great big cannon and lined up its sights on this vicious, snarling caterpillar. And very bravely, I shot at it. <laughs> Even though I was only a mile away. Kaboom! And that was the end of the mad caterpillar of Madras. I've got one of its legs right here. <laughs> well, that's not very brave, said another hunter. But I was brave when I tackled the ferocious ladybird of Leicester. <laughs> Me, with only my bare hands. Uh, and a little atom bomb. I blasted it out of the sky. Oh, and right here, I have that same ladybird's left nostril. Mm. And so they went on, boasting, while the rooster peeped in the window. Hey, they sound like fun. We should make friends with them. Hey, I know. Let's sing a song for them, because we're musicians now. Hey, good idea, said the cat. Positions, everybody. The dog jumped on the donkey's back. The cat climbed up on top of the dog, and the rooster flew up and perched on the cat's head. Then, at a stamp of the foot from the donkey, they all began to perform their music together. <laughs> the hunters sprang up, shouting, Oh no, it's a terrifying giant goose! <laughs> and they ran screaming into the forest. <laughs> and they were gone. Funny people, thought the animals. And they sat down at the table and ate as if they wouldn't eat for another month. And then, as it was nearly midnight, they put out the lights and each found himself a sleeping place. And from far away, the hunters saw the lights in their house go out. And the chief hunter said, now look here, we're great big tough hunters. I mean, ghosts. <laughs> oh, sorry, Titch. <laughs> Look, I'm not scared. Let's all go back into the house. And as the cowardly hunters oh, oh, crept back towards the house, oh, no, no, they were all so scaredy pants that one by one they dropped back behind trees. <laughs> Until only the very smallest hunter actually reached the house. And thinking the others were just behind him, he tippy toed into the kitchen. Hey, it looks all right to me, lads. Lads? Lads! Oh, he shuddered and shook in his boots when he realised he was all alone in the dark. So he found a candle on the mantelpiece and, and thinking that the cat's shining eyes were coals on the fire, he tried to light the candle by sticking it in the cat's eyes. Meow! said the cat. Flew in the hunter's face, spitting and scratching. Well, the hunter had the fright of his life and ran to the back door, but he whoop, boom, psh, bonk, tripped over the dog, who sprang up and bit his leg. <laughs> the hunter ran out across the yard, right through a dung heap, <laughs> where the donkey gave him a sharp kick with his hind foot. The hunter was, ah, Mommy, Mommy, shrieking at the top of his voice by now. So the rooster woke up and cried out, <coughs> Cock a doodle! What, what's going on? It's the middle of the night. Don't wake up, anybody! It's the middle of the night! 
the hunter ran back as fast as he could to the chief and said, you're wrong. It's not a ghost. There's a horrible witch sitting in the house who spat on me and scratched my face with her long claws. And by the door, there's a troll with a knife who stabbed me in the leg. And in the yard, there's a stinking swamp creature who hit me with a wooden club. But worst of all, up on the roof, there's a... There's a... Oh, I can hardly bring myself to tell you. There's a... Rooster. What? A real one? How big is it? About this big. That's very big. A rooster. I mean, if it was a caterpillar or even an earwig. I mean, you know me, earwig Ernie. But a rooster. That's about... That's about 20 gerbils standing on top of each other on tippy toes, spreading themselves out like this. Oh, oh, let's get out of here as fast as we can go. No, no, no. Faster. <laughs> ran away and were never seen again. So the animals were left alone to do what they liked doing best, watching me on the telly.